Hi, I'm Janet Ingle, the Five Minute Read Maker. A couple of people recently, uh, Steve and Beth, have both asked me about English horn reeds. I don't really consider myself an English horn specialist, but I can get around on the instrument, and I do find that the reeds are very straightforward to make. There are only a few details that are different from oboe reeds, so I will happily share my tips and tricks in this video. Um, first of all, winding English horn reeds is easy, and it works exactly the same as oboe reeds, but my first trick is that I've never bothered to buy an English horn mandrel. I have lots of equipment, and I do love buying stuff, and it's not so very expensive, but I've found that my poor man's uh, English horn mandrel works just fine, and I've never bothered to replace it. You can't put an English horn tube directly onto an oboe mandrel, because as you can see, it goes right through. The shape is wrong, it won't stay in place, and it, the uh, tube won't get enough support. But if you take an old oboe staple and you cut most of the cork off, the top couple of centimeters, and you can put that on the mandrel, then the English horn tube fits great, and you never need to buy something else. Um, so that's always the solution that I have used. The English horn tube itself is about 27 millimeters long, and I wind overall to 60 millimeters. I don't need to show you the winding process, right? It's exactly the same as oboe. My basic scrape for English horn is identical to an oboe scrape. All the same structures are in place, the tip and the rooftop, the heart, of course, and the back with its windows, just the same as on an oboe reed. The whole thing is bigger though, and much more forgiving. I place my rooftop at about 50 or 51 millimeters, that's for the gutter of the rooftop, and the bottom of the heart down here falls at 43, maybe 44 millimeters. You'll find as you're scraping that the tip feels simply enormous. There's just this great expanse of wood. As you can see here, um, but I really welcome that early on, and I tend not to clip back until much later in the process. First of all, there's a great big beautiful margin of error in case I should shred a corner a little bit, because um, all of that's going to get clipped away. Um, and second of all, I love that miraculous feeling when I take a great big messy reed, and with three clips I bring it back together to an actual playable beautiful thing. Maybe the biggest difference between an English horn reed and an oboe reed is wire. I put the wire on after I have a reed that beeps and crows pretty nicely. But this still sounds a little flappy to me, so I'll clip. That's crowing approximately a C, um, but that will change as soon as I wire it, so it's not a metric I bother with in general. Um, I finish English horn reeds largely by feel, not by the pitch of their crow. Um, here's this reed. Like that is an okay read at this point, so I'm going to go ahead and slap some wire on so I can finish it. The wire is a spool of 28 gauge brass wire, and I'll start by just spooling some of it out, and I'll use my needle nose pliers um, to kind of curl it as though you're curling a pretty birthday uh, present ribbon. And once I've curled it, I'll cut uh, maybe an inch and a half, maybe two inches. Because I've already got that nice curvature, it's gonna go on the English horn reed pretty nicely. I'm gonna start with the wire um, behind. It's, I guess, on the upper blade because the shorter blade is facing me. And I'm holding it securely in place with my index finger behind. I'm going to cross those two wires on this side. And pinch them with my fingers on the side. Hold them down pinchy with my index finger again. And now here I am on the other side. I've already got one wire here. I'll cross these again. And now I'll start twisting them just with my fingertips, and then finish that job with those same beautiful pliers. Once I've got a nice long skinny twist holding that together, I will cut the ends off, curl them down, 
and fold them so that that is the way it looks once it's wired. What usually happens is that that wire uh, tames the vibrations a little bit so that the reed is a little less open and flappy. Tubing is another thing that we never think about for oboe reeds, but it's really important for an English horn reed to seal snugly to the vocal, or you get leaks and notes don't respond, or in the worst case scenario, the reed can come all together off the vocal into your mouth and leave you sort of beeping pitifully along as your fingers keep playing your solo, but no sound is coming out of the instrument. Um, so this is just aquarium tubing. I can buy it at, the, at my grocery store or at the pet store. It's just a thing that you would use for fish. Here's how I use it. I cut off a little tiny bit. This is, I guess, about half a centimeter, five millimeters worth. I'm going to use my same beautiful needle nose pliers, insert them inside the tubing, and stretch it just a little bit to make it easier to put on the end of my tube. And once that's done, I'll just slide it on there. And nudge it into place with my thumbs. And then that should um, help the reed to seal securely onto the vocal so that you can beautifully play. Um, so I really hope this has been helpful. This has been a five minute reed maker lesson. You can follow these short videos right here on YouTube and you can subscribe if you wish. If you have questions or concerns or if you want to order reeds or cane, you can find me at JanetIngle.com. In fact, I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear what else I can help you with and what my next short video should address for you. Please let me know. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.